Hi there! This is a mechanical flying bird prototype. I've been keen on bionic robots since childhood. Those are the kind of robots which look like living things. I'll tell you what my Arnitopter consists of and how to make one for yourself. In episode 1 we will discuss the types of Arnithopters, uh, how to make them fly and which kind of mechanic you will need for that. What kind of ornithopter did I choose? Ornithopter is a complicated thing. If you just attach wings to a body, it won't be able to fly at once. Red Bulls attack anyone? That's what I'm talking about. There are lots of different ornithopters on the internet. For instance, ones like this, made of toothpicks. Those can survive a couple of flights. Or these, made of composite materials. They're very hard to create. Anybody can find the one on his or her taste. But there is a problem. There are no detailed instructions how to assemble an ornithopter. Trust me, I checked. All I found were photos from an RC forum as well as a lot of videos by some Asian enthusiast. That's why I paused the videos and took screenshots. so that I could compare ornithopter's size. At times, I considered the scale judging by the person on the screen. I went through 10 screenshots to figure out size of each ornithopter, the structure of the most important elements, and what the actual robots are made of. Having read and seen all that, I figure out that I want an ornithopter with the flapping wing. Obviously, there are uh, ones with the rigid wing, but they are harder to make. They have wings similar to ones found on airplanes, wingspan reaching 5 or 6 meters. Much easier is to create a flapping wing, it can be made even out of polyethylene. Besides, I like the fact that it resembles a real bird. How do I make it fly? While watching those videos, I notice a particular detail. All ornithopters flap their wings at a different rate. It is a Common principle. The bigger the wing area, the less the flap rate. For example, for a stroke, two flaps per second are enough to keep it airborne. For a sparrow, certain flaps per second. And for a hummingbird, up to 80. So what should I do? I want a big ornithopter, so the wing area should be big as well. In order to calculate the area, I need to set the wingspan. I will say from 1200 to 1400 mm is ok. Ornithopters with touch wingspan should go around 5-7 flaps per second and have gross weight between 300 to 500 grams. The flapping rate is clear, let's get into the flapping mechanism. There are plenty. Here's a staggered crank mechanism, like a crankshaft in the car. Here's single gear and dual gear crank. It transforms rational motion of the motor into translational motion of wing. All these mechanisms have a common disadvantage. Their gears have to be oriented at the right angle to the body. So I would have to think of a way to mount them. That's why I chose a transfer shaft mechanism. This design allows for the most symmetrical flap. And also, its gear axes are perpendicular to the body, so they can be easily installed. But there is a disadvantage. This flapping mechanism is the heaviest of all. I can ignore the weight, thanks to the size of my ornithopter. The flapping mechanism consists of a gear box, regulator, electric motor and the battery. Now I'll tell you more about every component. Let's start from the main part, electric motor. The motor has to be compact and powerful, to be able to provide enough torque to overcome air drag. So an aircraft modeling store is my place to go to look for the right one. I need a small powerful brushless motor, commonly used in medium-sized motorboats and helicopters. I choose a 4200 kV motor. KV parameter defines the motor's revolutions per minute, with one volt and no load applied. In our case that is 4200 rpm. A motor is connected to wings via a gearbox. A gearbox is a set of differently sized gears. The smallest one has 80s and the biggest has 84. These are used to lower the RPM ratio.
For now the monitor makes 31,080 RPM when powered with 7.4 volts battery. That is 518 revolutions per second. Too much. I don't need that many flaps per second. 5 would be enough. The gearbox here works like the one in a winch. A winch has a handle that connects to a shaft with something heavy attached to it. Its pulling speed is slower than the rotating speed because there is a set of gears inside that transforms quick handle rotations into slow and powerful shaft revolutions. I use that principle in the Ornithopter to increase the torque and to achieve the necessary flap rate. I bought the smaller gears in modeling stores, but I couldn't find the bigger ones neither in stores nor in the internet, so I decided to 3D print them using nylon as a material. It is a light and durable material used in the car and motorboat building industries. Besides, nylon has got self-lubricating capabilities, so don't jam that often. In order for my bird to flap 5 to 7 times per second, I need to reduce the motor RPM ratio, which is 518 revolutions per second. So, I need to make it about a hundred times less. The reduction gear has two gear pairs. Those are 72 to 80s uh, and 84 to 90s. I calculate the relation and see the RPM ratio reduction. It is 84. It means the motor is going to rotate 84 times slower. I will divide my motor RPM ratio with this coefficient and I'll get 6.16 revolutions per second. And that is just fine. Well, now my motor with the gearbox provides about 6.16 revolutions per second. But what if I'd want to go faster or slower? That's right, I'd need to increase or decrease the RPM. I need an electric speed control for that. Here's how it works. My motor is brushless. Inside there is a copper wire called round the starter. It creates a magnetic field which pushes the inner shaft. The ESK changes the coil activation ratio in the motor, thus controlling the RPM. Lowering the coil activation ratio lowers the RPM and vice versa. When selecting an ASK it is necessary to take its power output into account. It has to be higher than your motor's maximum power consumption, otherwise the ESK may fail. The smaller the ASK is better. I am doing my best to make my Arnie Sopter as light as possible. So now I need to set up the ASK. I've got a program ready in Arduino. Now I simply need to press the button to provide power for regulator. Arduino automatically sends all the necessary settings to the regulator and plays a cool tune on finishing the calibration. I control the ASK like a common servo via Arduino with a potentiometer. Its analog signal is transformed into a PVM signal with a required frequency and goes to the regulator. Now I can control the RPM ratio with a potentiometer. Now I want to check how my assembly works. Will it really give me 6 revolutions per hour? Shish! Who knows? <laughs> to do this, I will run my assembly at maximum power and check how it works in a slow motion. Now I just need to add lever arms to move the wings up and down. I'm ready. But I want to add one more detail. Six flaps per second is too quick for a human eye to see. So I record the mechanism in action at 240 frames per second and then play back the video at 50 frames per second. The playback is five times slower than the actual footage. Flap counter is right here on the display and timer in milliseconds right here. I wonder if it may be considered a proper flight. I didn't fix the mechanism and the vibration caused it to fall off the platform. There is now a crack in the stand. It's a pity, but whatever. 
I'll just take it into consideration and fasten the mechanism to the stand with white tape. Nice! I got 6 flaps per second. Cool! Thank you for watching guys, give me a big thumbs up, don't forget to subscribe and here is what is waiting for you in the next episode.